We have some new CNN reporting today about what is going on behind the scenes inside the Harris campaign and more broadly among Democrats who are growing more and more anxious about a 2016 redux. CNN's Priscilla Alvarez joins me now. Priscilla, uh, we were just joking here at the table that anxious Democrats happen on a day that ends in Y. But this is, uh, this is something that perhaps is, is warranted given the data that they're seeing. Explain your great reporting. Yeah, look, that's exactly right, Dana. And this has been a campaign that was described by multiple Democrats, allies, aides uh, to the vice president as a good vibes campaign. But what's also creeping in now is that anxiety. The reason for that is because these polls are not really moving. Despite multiple battleground blitzes, despite uh, the opportunities she has had uh, across media outlets, there is still not a lot of movement from voters who are moving more towards her versus former President Donald Trump. Uh, in fact, I had one source describe it to me this way, quote, people are nervous. They know the polls are tight. And a lot of us are having these flashbacks to 2016, too. We know when it can go the wrong way and it can still feel fresh. So 2016 is the key here. When I've talked. Are people to saying Harris that it's 2016 all over again? And are those people Democrats? <laughs> well, we're going to see how it actually may be a whole lot worse than that. Trump is seeing a huge polling boost in swing states since that panicked report report by CNN aired, and we're going to see why 2016 may in fact be the least of the Democrats' worries. Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve Yule, Patriot Professor. <laughs> That's my Kamala accent, so whatever. I'm here to help you stay sane in these insane times, so you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we dive into Kamala's crumbling campaign, you know, we got war, we got hurricanes, we got inflation, we got Kamala. With all of the uncertainty and insanity surrounding us in the whole world, there's never been a better time to secure our finances with the timeless value of gold and silver. And so that's why we have as one of our wonderful friends and sponsors, the amazing company Gold Co. Because they're patriots just like us who want to help you and guide you in how to get into precious metals, but completely and totally tax-free and penalty free. Now, in fact, if you click on that link below right now, you can actually get your very own absolutely free gold and silver kit. It's an amazing free resource that shows you step by step how to get into precious metals, even if your money's still in a retirement account like an IRA or a 401k. And again, just to show you how awesome the Patriots over at Gold Co. are, the best part is that you may actually already qualify to get up to $10,000 in free silver. I told you they're the best, so what are you waiting for? Get in on the action by clicking on that link below or going to TurleyTalksLikesGold.com and getting your free gold and silver kit today. With just 20 plus days left until the big day, all of the predictive indicators, gang, all of them, the polling, the voter registration trends, the early voting, every single one of the major predictive indicators for the 2024 election, they are all all swinging in Trump's direction. Here's the latest swing state polls from Emerson. And again, you could see, I mean, they're absolutely devastating for Harris. Trump is leading in Arizona by two. He's leading in Pennsylvania by one. He's leading in Georgia by one. He's leading in North Carolina by one. They're tied in Michigan. They're tied in Wisconsin. Now, keep in mind, Kamala was leading in all of these polls just a couple of weeks back. So these are falling averages for her with Emerson polling, which always leans left, by the way. Same with the latest from Quinnipiac. Again, a notoriously left-wing polling outlet. Look at this. Even with this notoriously left-wing polling outlet, Quinnipiac, Trump is up freaking three in Michigan. It was Harris plus five just a couple of weeks ago. They have Trump up two in Wisconsin. It was Harris plus one a month ago. She's falling. These are falling averages. And to make matters worse, Wisconsin always pulls to the left and votes to the right. That's how our good friend Rich Barris puts it, uh, polling analyst. Wisconsin always polls to the left but votes to the right. Wisconsin always, 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 always votes to the right of its polling. And so if Trump is up in Wisconsin, that's a nightmare scenario for the Cackles campaign. But again, it, it goes way, it goes with exactly what we're seeing 
in the latest polling coming out of Iowa and Ohio, where Trump has double digit leads. And the demographics in Wisconsin are very similar in that Iowa, in many ways, is a bellwether for Wisconsin in that Wisconsin never votes outside of nine points away from Iowa. So if Trump is up double digits in Iowa. It's game over. It's exactly what we're seeing in this polling, plus their voting patterns. And now to make it worse, Trump is leading the RCP average in Michigan. Have you seen this? This just came out yesterday. The real clear polling aggregate, the RCP average, right? So this is the polling site that averages out all of the polling that's been done. Gang, with all of the polling average out, Trump is winning Michigan. You've got to let that hit. That's that's a death knell for the Harris campaign. This is why they look like, as again, Barris was saying this the other day, it looks like she's just choking, both literally and figuratively. It just looks like she's choking. It just looks like she's just falling apart. She looks nervous. She looks frazzled in all these interviews. It's because there's no winning the White House for her if she can't win Michigan. But it gets worse. It gets worse. Take a look at the RCP averages for all three blue wall states. Again, as a Democrat, because of her electoral disadvantage, Cackles has to win all three blue wall states. In Wisconsin, Harris's lead is down to 0.5%. What does Wisconsin do? It always votes what? It always votes to the right of its polling. So her lead is down to 0.5%. Trump is ahead in three of the last four polls in Wisconsin. In Michigan, of course, Trump is now up 0.5%. He leads in four of the last five polls. And in Pennsylvania, Trump is now up by 0.2%. Again, Pennsylvania, same thing. It always votes to the right of its polling. He leads in three of the last five polls. So we reported the other day that according to political analyst Mark Halperin, The Kamala campaign really is in a full-blown panic. He's talked to Kamala campaign operatives. They're freaking out. They're in a total panic mode. And he's seen their internal polling. And it's very much like the Quinnipiac polls, the public polls, except for Pennsylvania. Kamala's internals, the private polling has her down four in Pennsylvania. Trump's internals have them up by three in the Keystone State. And again, this is just the polling gang. This is just the polling. We've got other predictive indicators here, like voter registration trends and early voting and mail-in ballot requests. Every single predictive indicator has Trump stronger than he has ever been, either in 2016 or 2020, and the Democrat weaker than they've ever been against him. So whether you're looking at the polls, I mean, it doesn't matter which poll you look at. You could cherry pick all you want. Every single poll shows Trump doing better than he has ever done, either nationally or in a swing state. And then when you go to the registration and party identification trends, not only are Republicans out-registering Democrats by a lot in every single state for the exception of Colorado, because I guess they're smoking too much weed, I don't know what they're doing over there, but Republicans now have a majority in party identification for the first time in Gallup's polling history. Republicans are absolutely crushing it. The Republicans are plus three in party identification, uh, according to Gallup. And the reason why that's so important is that party identification is actually the single most accurate election prediction indicator that we have. Gallup found that party identification predicts the popular vote winner within 1% accuracy for the last four election cycles. And Republicans are now plus three over Democrats. First time party identification favors the Republicans in the history of Gallup's polling. And then you look at early voting. You look at the early voting trends and the requests for mail-in ballots. And everywhere you look, Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, Republicans are up and Democrats are not up. (laughs) They are down. They are significantly down from 2020. So this is why polling analysts, Rich Barris, Robert Barnes, they're saying that CNN and the Democrats are wrong. This election is not looking like 2016. It's actually looking a lot more like 2008. 
That's exactly what Democrat strategist Van Jones said when he was at the Republican National Convention in July. The mass enthusiasm and unity he saw there surrounding Trump, he said, felt like Obama back in 2008. Simply put, there are two fundamental problems with the Harris campaign that they cannot overcome. This is these two fundamental problems are totally hampering their ability to be to be able to win this thing. Besides her being just an embarrassingly inept candidate. The first is the assumption among Democrats that all they needed to do was find someone to replace Biden and they were good to go. So for the Democrats, there was this assumption that the fundamental problem for their reelection was Biden and his obvious senility. Replace Biden and the combination of the legacy media campaigning for the Democrat, as they always do, plus the power of the incumbency being the incumbent party in the White House, that'll do the rest. The fundamental problem with that assumption is that it wasn't Biden's senility that was ultimately his undoing. It was sort of like that was in many ways the straw that broke the camel's back. It wasn't his senility. It was his policies. If you looked at poll after poll after poll months before that disastrous debate when he fell apart in front of the country, in the front of the world, frankly. If you looked at poll after poll months before that debate, 60, 70 Seventy-five percent of the population believed the country was on the wrong track. Biden was polling in the 20s and low 30s with the economy and inflation and jobs, and the border and foreign policy. His presidency was a disaster, not because of his cognitive decline per se. It was a disaster precisely because of his policies. And over the last three months, Kamala has not been able to effectively and convincingly and persuasively dislodge herself from her role in those policies. And now, of course, thanks to the borderline illiterates at The View, she has now publicly declared no difference whatsoever with those policies. So that's the first problem. The second problem for the Harris campaign was the assumption that identity politics was enough to keep the traditional Democrat coalition together. All she had to do was check off the right boxes in terms of, you know, her identity politics or being a woman, being blah, blah, blah. All she had to do was check off those boxes and then demonize Trump as a racist and bigot and all kinds of phobic. Then again, they would be good to go to hold their traditional voting coalition together. The problem with that is that there has been a radical political realignment in the making now for the last eight years among the working class voter, both white and non-white working class voter, which has amassed an extraordinarily formidable coalition for Trump. Trump has maximized his white working class vote of 2016 and 2020. All at the same time, he's minimized the Democrats' margins with non-white working class voters by garnering his biggest support yet with the non-white working class. Take a look at this report. This just came out. Black and Latino Democrats are switching to the GOP in record numbers in deep blue California. I, I featured the Philadelphia Inquirer article just a couple of days back that showed that a record number of working class Latinos were defecting over to Trump in the Philly area. Now we're seeing it in California. I mean, th this is this is the consistent pattern that we have been seeing all throughout this election. Trump is getting a higher percentage of the Latino vote, a higher percentage of the black vote, particularly black men under the age of 50 than any Republican has seen in half a century. And so Trump has successfully amassed a coalition that maximizes his own constituency of 2016, 2020, while minimizing the Democrats constituency. And that's why you're starting to see the polls move so decisively in Trump's favor. There was simply no way that Harris 
There's no way that Harris can hemorrhage her own constituencies by this much and win. Again, when you compare the two candidates, just ask yourself which one is expanding his coalition and which one is seeing her coalition shrink. (laughs) Sorry to lead the witness there, but it's obvious. Going on all these stupid shows, Call Her Daddy and the Howard Stern show, the, the dwindling audience of Stephen Colbert, she's doing absolutely nothing to reach out and salvage that hemorrhaging of the working class voter who's struggling to pay his bills and who's competing against low-wage illegal migrant workers. So all of this is to say that the polls really look like they are collapsing for Kamala. And if the next three weeks are anything like the last two weeks have been, that colossal collapse is just getting started. (laughs) 